Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ambrosio or College Anomaly and like the title of this video says, this is the story of how I became a scientist at 18 years old. Hope you guys like this video. Hit that thumbs up if you do and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned with the latest content. Thank you. So let me start off by saying that this is not fake. This is not some lie or some joke. And as you just seen, that was a, a you know a little little time lapse video of me uh, conducting some maintenance procedures here at the lab, as well as doing like the day two stages of a little experiment uh, called a Western blot. Um, I won't get into much detail of the science and the experiments that we do here in the lab because every lab has their own protocol and every everyone has their own way of doing it. But anyway. The reason I'm making this video and sharing it with you guys is because um, a lot of people always ask me like, what do I work in? Where do I work at? Uh, what am I going to college for? Especially when I go back home, uh, when I talk to my family, when I talk to the homies back. And the answer has honestly been the same uh, since I joined my very first lab when I was just 18 years old. I am pursuing a career as a scientist. And I know that uh, especially in, you know, where I come from, Nobody really knows what it is that you can do with a college degree. Nobody really understands the kind of careers that exist through college. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys that. So I just wanna clarify and clear it up for anybody who's ever wondered like what I do for a living, what I'm planning to do or what, I'm, what I work in. Let's start at the beginning. All right, so I was 18 years old. I was finishing my first quarter at UCI. Um, remember, I was a young, knucklehead coming from South Central LA uh, at UC Irvine, a completely new environment, new world. But honestly, I remember doing pretty good GPA-wise, school-wise. Um, my GPA was pretty strong at the time, not so much anymore, but um, because it was fairly good when I was a freshman, I remember receiving this email one day, right? Um, because as you all know, as any college student knows that we're checking our emails like 24 seven in class, just sitting down, we're just like, it's like any other social media thing. We're just gonna go scrolling through our email, making sure we didn't miss anything. And that's just the way it goes. So I saw this email, right? This email from somebody named uh, Dr. Marlene de la Cruz. And the email was like an invitation to this panelist session that they were gonna be holding um, like sometime in like January, early February. But you know, I thought this was like some fake spam email whatever like I didn't really take it that serious but at the time I was curious and I was hungry for any opportunity that came my way because I was really trying to like make the most out of my college experience so I looked her up I re I typed her name in Google typed UCI next to her name and see what I came up with and to my surprise bro this was a real email this is a real email from the director at a program at UC Irvine called uh, minorities in science program or as we call it MSP and sure enough it was a legit program um, they had a whole list of things they do for example the main thing that they do and focus on is uh, they help black and brown minorities get into and get access to these uh, laboratories here at UC Irvine um, as well as the most important thing uh, is they pay us they pay us to work they pay us to do science they pay us to do research which is crazy already as it sounds like, I thought this was too good to be true. But yeah, they like they basically just jumpstart our careers as scientists. We could eventually end up going to PhD, grad school, med school, whatever it is you wanna pursue as a career in your future life. And I kinda started freaking out. I'm like, holy how do I start? Where do I apply? But then the self doubt started creeping in. Remember, I was still just a freshman, still first quarter of college, feeling out of place, feeling out of my zone, just out of everything. Like I was just, not confident at all you know what i'm saying like just i was just being the anomaly you know sticking out like a sore thumb and so i talked to my mentor veronica um and she was just so excited to hear about this she started telling me about all these statistics of how minorities rarely get opportunities in college how we rarely get any kind of like recognition especially latinos in science whatever like how minorities don't even pursue these kind of careers and yeah, like she was just trying to uplift me, trying to get me to re to apply. And, and I would honestly, 
you know, at the time I was just like, man, but like, I've never, I don't have any experience. I've never done this before. Like, I, I don't even know what science is, to be honest. Um, like I said, I was coming in with that high school knowledge. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like a Debbie Downer, dude. Like, but in the end, I did end up RSVPing to that panel session and it was life changing, no doubt. So the panel took place in like winter quarter of 2017 whatever I, don't, I forgot if it was like late january early february you know i attended i sat through and listened to about like five students who were graduating seniors at the time of the program msp i just listened to them share their advice talk about all the science they've done all the research and they spoke with like such a passion that from the moment that i left the room i knew i knew that that was what i wanted to be like I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to sound all smart, all intelligent, um, all doing important work for the school, for the world. And the best part is, was that they were getting paid while doing all this. So after that panel session, man, I just went home and like just kept replaying and replaying a lot of the advice that they shared, a lot of the different answers that they gave. And honestly, like they were uh, all just like me. Um, zero experience when they first started zero confidence zero knowledge they're just you know what i'm saying like they all were also just young inexperienced like me at the time they were just trying to find their place in society and find their career for the rest of their life as well so the next day we got an email right away from the director of the program again she's like she was always on top of it she really cared and she really wanted students to succeed in her program so she always did her best to like stay on top of these things and email us constantly so she emailed us um, with the application, you know, uh, I, I believe it was kind of like sent to those who actually RSVP to the panel session and attended it. So yeah, like once I got that application, I never submitted an application so fast, even though it had like some pretty hard essay questions, it almost felt like I was reapplying to college, right? Like, I mean, I was able to use some of my college application answers. I was able to use some of those, but like it was like, the process all over again like I had to answer a bunch of questions give some essay responses and yeah I did that and I ended up submitting it like probably a few days after we got the application right um, that might that might have helped my cause <laughs> that might have been why I ended up I did end up getting into the program so a couple weeks later um, I ended up getting an email back from the director asking uh when when i was available to come in for an interview and at that moment man i was like i was pumped bro i was like nervous excited happy like just damn man i, I couldn't wait um so i was like you know i'm ready to come in tomorrow the day after tomorrow like i gave i sent her like a like multiple days and times that i was available and so i think i went in like maybe two days later and dude, this was like not a normal interview. Like this was far from it. This was basically a congratulatory meeting. It was basically like, I, so, so what happened was I came in and I, I met her, introduced myself. I thanked her for the panelists or for the panel session. And already it was like, I was already in the program. She started just asking me questions like, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to pursue? What kind of field are you interested in? And like she finished her her whole spiel with, are you ready to go to grad school, PhD school? And right then and there, I knew that I was in the program. So, you know, I answered all her questions. Yes, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just hungry, man, just ready for opportunity. And she was like, well, congratulations. We believe you're like the perfect fit for the program and we'd like to have you on board. So welcome. If you accept, let us know in a couple of days. And yeah, so, you know, right away I told her like, yeah, yeah, like get me in the program, like put me in, put me in coach. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, uh, and so I thanked her, I shook her hand, everything. Like I even spoke to her in Spanish. And once I left that room, I never felt so excited for the future. I had to share it with everybody. I told all my homies in the hall. I told my mentor, I told my mom, like I was just, so happy that day after i accepted it we got another email um telling us that our training was gonna officially start 
in the spring break. So basically in between winter quarter and spring quarter. And during that spring break, the program placed us in their primary research lab, which is run, ran and headed by Dr. Luis Mota Bravo. He's also like the director as well of the program. And they're both just amazing people. And basically in this lab is where I was taught every single basic thing that comes with science, that has to do with science. And it was just such a great experience, um, especially because I wasn't the only one. There were like about 12, 13 other students who had also been accepted to the program, just like me, freshmen, sophomores. And they were brand new to science, had never done it before. And we all like, you know, eventually became friends through that program. You know, shout out my boy Mauricio at UCSF. Shout out the homegirl Iris doing her thing. Shout out Freddie. But yeah, like we worked, we struggled together. It was just like a really fun experience, you know, new, something new, something to do, something that felt like I was making a change. When the spring break was over, our training was over, and when spring quarter started, it was finally time to get put into rotation, get put into shifts, get get working schedules. Um, like I said, this was a paid job, a paid career. So it was kind of like, okay, so let us know what hours and times you're available. We'll work with your class schedule. And you know, you can come into the lab this amount, this time from this time and every day, you know, or every other day, whatever, whenever you were available. Um, I believe at the time it was like minimum 12 hours a week. So, you know, I remember, I think I did like four hours, three days a week and that was enough to meet the requirement. Obviously, if you had more time in your schedule, you were able to do more hours. Uh, the limit was like 20 hours and still is 20 hours for part-time workers, because that's what we were considered. And yeah, man, it felt good. Um, like, you know what I'm saying? I was getting paid by the school, technically. You know, I was a paid worker at UC Irvine and still am actually, to this day, I'm still getting paid by the program. I'm still being funded and supported. Um, by MSP, which is also funded and supported by the NIH, which is the National Institutes of Health. Honestly, like I can't emphasize enough how, how great their support is and how great it is that, and how fortunate we are to have uh, financial funding to pursue our careers. Because honestly, um, you guys might be surprised by this, but a lot of people who go into science, who do research in labs, they actually don't get paid. A lot of students, do free work basically a lot of undergraduate students especially if if you're not in a program that pays uh, most of the research labs are funded by the main professor who runs it and so whenever they get new students they have to pay them right luckily for us we had a program like a third party program that was paying us rather than that professor having to pay us that gave us a lot more leverage than other students because you know what I mean like and that gave us a lot more leverage than other students because um, professors like to see that they didn't have to worry about the money. They didn't have to worry about, you know, compensating for us. But yeah, so, I mean, I can keep going on and on and on about my research experience and, you know, what it is to, to do science and what it's like. Uh, this video is getting a little long. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you stuck all the way through and listened to me ramble and talk about this, uh, you know, this life-changing moment in my life, I appreciate you. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below for more, if you wanna hear more about it. Um, what specifics would you like to know? What would you like to see? Would you like to see more of these videos like where I'm working in the lab? And lastly, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Peace. So I'm all geared up. Let's get the day started.
días, ¿cómo están? Bien.